understanding your business risk. This can be a really tough thing for businesses to get their arms around. I get to see it firsthand. As a business lawyer, one of the things I often engage with businesses on is understanding their risk. And particularly when companies are raising capital, one of the things we'll often have to do is list out the risks of the business. Now, this can be a real eye-opener for most businesses because they're like, oh my God, what are my risks, right? It's this not something you think about at least directly all the time. Sure, if you're a good manager of a business, if you're a good, strong business person, you are thinking about a lot of your very likely risks in some way, shape, or form, right? You are dealing with what happens if there's a disruption, what happens if you don't get your supplies, what if your employees quit. Uh, these are very real things that you're probably thinking about every day. But what most business owners are not thinking about is broader risks, bigger risks, things that impact the business, things that might impact an investment in the business. And so today, I want to spend a little time bringing some clarity to this to help you think a little bit more about understanding your risk and what those risks are for your business. This will help you be a better manager, help you better be a better leader. If you're looking at raising money, uh, and you're working with your lawyer on putting together the offering documents that go around that, this will help you be more cognizant of that, right? We're not here to give legal financial investment advice on this channel. That's not what we do. We help educate so that people can work better with their attorney and their advisors to get things done. So with that being said, how do we get our arms around risk in our business? Well, a great place to start is what keeps you up at night, right? The old proverbial question, what keeps you up at night, is a good place to start thinking about risk. If you're worried about it, if you're losing sleep over it, if you're challenged by it, then that probably is a risk that you need to think about understanding, potentially listing for an investor, potentially dis discussing with your board. And that will get you probably some of your biggest risks right there. And that's a great place to start, right? Are you worried about a vendor not coming through? Are you worried about a customer going out of business? Are you worried about employee issues? Are you worried about not being able to attract the right talent? Are you worried about people quitting on you? Are you worried about the down economy taking a big hit on your business, right? These are things that you as a business owner, business leader, probably have right in your head, right on the tip of your tongue that you could say, okay. These are real risks that I'm worried about, and this is stuff I want to deal with in my business. Great place to start. But for most businesses, there are more risks beyond that. There are risks that are perhaps outside the business that could impact you, right? In a general economic downturn, if you're not thinking about that specifically. Uh, changes in interest rates. We've talked about that on other videos and other things, that they, we're in a changing interest rate environment right now. So the idea that you know you may have to pay more interest may impact things. Regulatory change may be coming at some point, right? Your industry may be caught up in change. We seem to be in a world where government regulation is changing quickly. And we're in another one of those cycles where we're having increasing regulation. So industry by industry, uh, your regulatory environment might be changing. Um, you may be facing a risk of bankruptcy by other people, you know, that you're not thinking about. So how do you get your arms around these other risks? Well, one good exercise is to go to your board of directors and to start making lists, right? Can we sit down together and talk about what risks are bothering you? And what's interesting is in a good board of directors where you have a diversity of people from different industries, different backgrounds, different styles of business, uh, they will have seen different risks materialize, right? What's in, you know, businesses um, are exposed to certain risks, and different people live different risks, right? I personally have been at a law firm that failed. People got in internal fights. Uh, people disagreed. People packed up their toys and left. And that really changed my perspective on partnerships and how businesses can change and how one or two dominoes or one or two pegs in the Jenga system can cause the whole thing to collapse. So I always think in terms of that. But other people have had other experiences. Some people have had turnaround experiences. Some people have been through a business bankruptcy. 
Uh, some people have been through shutdowns, right? So these are all things that other people may have experience with. Another great place to go is sec.gov. Now, sec.gov has a number of 10Ks, 10Qs, registration statements from public companies. Now, these are larger companies, right? Probably larger than many people viewing this business are viewing this video are associated with. Uh, you, know, you have to reach a certain size and critical mass in order to be public and have filings on sec.gov. But these filings are broad, they are generally comprehensive, and they generally cover a wide range of in industries. So regardless of what type of business you have and what industry you're in, you should be able to go to sec.gov, pull uh, filings from companies in a similar interest industry, and in that, there will be a risk factor section. So if you pull an S1, which is a registration statement for uh, a sale of securities, you pull an S1 from a company, uh, you start opening up, you're going to notice it's a very large document, but there's going to be a whole section on risk factors, and it's usually going to span several pages, and it's going to talk about what a risk factor it is, and then it's going to talk about what happens if that risk develops. Right, so you might see a company that says, you know, we may be exposed to higher interest rates in the future, right? And there's a lot of folks that think interest rates haven't reached a peak yet. I still think we have a little bit to go personally, right? I'm not here to give investment or financial advice, but my personal gut instinct is interest rates are still going to tick up a little more than what they are right now. So, you know, a company might put a risk factor in there and say, you know, we may be exposed to higher interest rates. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means that suddenly everything you're borrowing costs more. And if you're leveraged, if you maybe are financing your inventory or if you need money to make payroll or other things, that all suddenly costs more. And then you can see them describing that risk factor, how that works. But what's important for you and me that are on the outside is to look at those risk factors through the industry and think about what applies to us. Now, if you have a company that is absolutely cash based, you've paid off all your debts, you know, it's fully financed through pure ownership of inventory, which is extremely rare, but if that's you, you may not have the same interest rate risk as that company we just talked about. So while the interest rate factor might be important to them as far as financing inventory, it may not be important to you when you're inventory financing. However, that same interest rate risk might apply to your customers and your vendors, right? If your vendors have higher interest rate expense, higher interest expense because of higher interest rates, they may in turn come back to you and expect you to pay more, right? They say our costs have gone up, mainly the cost of carrying this inventory. And so they're going to say higher prices, which then is going to have a spiral effect in your business. Or maybe your customers are facing higher interest rates, which causes them to lower their inventory, right? They're not going to keep as much stockpiled because they don't want to have as much cash in their inventory. Well, that's going to have a follow-on effect back to you because them lowering their inventory may mean a period of less orders for you, right? You can see how this is all interconnected. But what's great by going to a database like sec.gov and looking at what other companies have reported is that you can then say, does this risk apply to me? Does it not apply to me? Is it good or is it bad, right? This, this is the type of analysis that is very helpful uh, to help you pinpoint your risks, right? Because what other people are experiencing may well be relevant to what you're experiencing. Not to mention, it may prompt you to think about something you weren't thinking about, think about something in a different way. Now, one thing I want to emphasize here when you're pulling this S1 and when you're looking at what other people have done is to think about who prepared that. These things are generally prepared by law firms, um, so they have a different take of risk. But you have to understand what type of law firm prepared it. Sometimes you're not going to be able to find directly which law firm prepared it. Sometimes in an offering situation, that law firm's name will come up somewhere else. Uh, the law firms generally don't like to put their names directly in the documents unless they have to. But that law firm's name might appear there. It might appear in one of the exhibits in an opinion. Uh, it may come up somewhere. So what you generally want to do 
is find these documents that are prepared by large, credible law firms. Uh, while there's no guarantees in life and there's no guarantees in business, uh, the large law firms tend to recruit the better people. They tend to spend more time on training and development, and they generally tend to have a risk management department, which is looking over the shoulders of the lawyers, thinking about risk. What is risk? Risk is the chance that they mess something up. And so if they're being very careful to not mess something up internally, it means for you, the reader, that they probably were more careful about this stuff. So I'm going to give more credit to a S1 or a document prepared by a large, reputable national firm than I am to one that's you know done by a smaller firm. Even though I myself have a smaller firm, I have a tradition of having been in the big law firms. I think I carry forward some of those same notions. But there are also people in small firms who have never had that big law firm experience, right? They never were there, so they didn't have those experiences. They didn't build that knowledge. They didn't have that same vetting. So I get a hold of all of this, and then what I want to do is work with my management team. I probably want somebody to be the lead drafter that's going to take risk factors that we've thought about internally, risk factors that we found from others, and then start putting them in the context of our business, right? So write risk factors that are specific to your business, but you might be inspired or learned from the risk factors of others. And then what you want to do is run that through your management team and tailor it. This could be a really powerful exercise. I mean, people think about this as a burden when they're doing a securities offering because they suddenly have to write all these risks down. But it's an exercise that many businesses don't do that can be very powerful, right? Getting ahead of your risks, understanding what your risks are, knowing what risks you're taking makes you better for discussing with your investors, makes you better able to cover those risks, makes you look for contingency plans. So it's a really great exercise. It's just a long exercise something you should probably do in connection with your lawyer. Uh, even if you just have them view, review from a cursory standpoint, they might be able to add some ideas, particularly if they have experience in business law and securities law. Build this thing out. You can use it internally as a management tool, but then you might be using it externally when you're raising money. So there's a lot of reasons to get an understanding around your risk. Hope that's helpful to you folks. If you have general questions or comments that are not specific to you, your company, your situation, go and drop them below along with suggestions for videos. Remember that your comments may not be confidential. In fact, they're not confidential. Other people will see them. So don't put anything there you don't want other people seeing. And you may want to consider checking out our library of past videos and subscribing to our channel for more tips. Thanks for tuning in today, folks. I'll see you for another video soon.